Lima, Peru, one of the driest cities on earth. A quarter of the population have no direct access to water. Pareciera que se están secándose a falta de agua. All over the globe, water supplies are dwindling as temperatures rise and glaciers melt. As we head towards an ice-free earth, it will only get worse. Everyone will be affected. It doesn't matter whether you're living in Peru or the United States or China, you will be impacted by this change. But something can be done. People are already adapting to combat climate change. Es una atrapaniebla, es una atrapaniebla gigante. No me gusta la palabra no se puede, se intenta. Nunca es no se puede. The story starts here, in the Andes. The world's longest mountain range and one of the most beautiful. But there are omens in the ice. Five thousand four hundred meters above sea level, on the glacier of Hualcan in Peru, Lonnie Thompson and his international research team are drilling into the ice core. Lonnie is one of the world's leading glaciologists. Since 1974, he has organized 55 expeditions to 16 countries. What he's discovered is disturbing. Some of these ice fields have been here over 20,000 years. We know that in monitoring them over the last 30 years, and on the lower reaches, uh, that these glaciers are not just retreating, the rate at which they're retreating is accelerating. Glaciers hold about 70% of the world's fresh water supply. Water that falls as snow moves through the slowly churning ice and can emerge thousands of years later as streams and rivers that feed the valleys below. The ice around us, uh, this has built up over thousands of years. And it's kind of like a bank account of water. And every wet season, the snow accumulates. Every dry season, the glacier releases water. But as the glaciers become smaller, it's like taking more out of the bank account every year. And eventually, there will be no glaciers and no water, particularly in the dry season. Lonnie may be the expert, but he feels powerless in the face of such momentous change. You feel toward a glacier like hey, you had a child or a, a grandparent who had cancer uh, at the mercy of something that's much bigger than they are or you are. And all you can do is sit there and watch the response. Lonnie records this response by boring into the glacier. They use a high-tech drill to bring up cores of ice a meter at a time until they reach the bedrock. The ice is examined for historical evidence trapped within it. If you can't understand the nature of climate change of the past, you will never understand the future. The ice will record anything that's in the atmosphere at the time the snow falls. And it pres preserves it for us. Under an eight, break at 65. And so we're starting to get into what's really interesting ice. Particularly right now, we're very interested in finding organics, plants and insects in the ice. Well, what we'd like to find here is a, a, monster. a monster that we can carbon date him. If you look carefully, you actually see uh, the crystals. It looks like fiber, it looks like a yeah. cobweb. It seems to be growing as I watch him. <laughs> Living on the glacier is tough. Up here, there is 50% less oxygen than at sea level. This is particularly hard for Lonnie, who suffers from chronic asthma. But despite that, his passion for his work means he has logged more time at high altitude than most other mountaineers. Well, okay, I had a little issue with my asthma last night. And uh, well, they were over a week due for my shot. But I just gotta go down there and get it. <laughs> when you go down and get it, then you gotta come back up. <laughs> But this morning, <laughs> I, uh, my feet are double size, <laughs> so 
So there's a number of issues this morning. <laughs> deal with. Deal. They'll pass. It's repetitive, arduous work and cold. But the ice is telling Lonnie it used to be even colder. It's the warmest it's been in this part of the world for certainly over 5,000 years. And it's getting warmer. As the temperatures of our planet warm, the melting line on all of these glaciers is moving higher and higher. And I think this is the last opportunity to recover a climate record from this site. Yeah, in fact, uh, as here uh, around the world, we're racing against time because these records start to degrade long before the glacier disappears. A four degree rise in global temperatures will cause nearly all the world's glaciers to melt. This is not yet inevitable, but it will be if current carbon emissions continue at the present rate. There are already worrying signs of global warming in the valley below. The locals are worried. Daniel Mesa is a 57-year-old farmer who lives in a village in the valley below Hualcan. Daniel's wife died after an operation four years ago and now he brings up his five daughters alone. Stephanie. The lack of water makes being a single parent even harder. Bueno, a nosotros nos, nos está afectando demasiado porque realmente como somos varios, este, una parte también para lavar, para consumo y también para riego, en fin, nos está afectando bastante. Yo, yo veo que sin tener agua no habría vida. Porque sin agua no puede vivir ni agricultura, ni humano, ni animales. Es una preocupación para el futuro. Las familias de veces se van a otros lugares porque hay poca producción de cosecha. Many go to the capital, Lima. But Lima is also running out of water. Over a quarter of Peru's 30 million people live here. And every day, more immigrants flood in but the water doesn't. This is a city built in the desert. It's dependent for its water on rivers flowing from glaciers in the Andes. Guillermo Leon is director of Lima's state-owned municipal water company. He has his work cut out. Lo que hemos notado es un incremento en la temperatura mínima que ocurre en los Andes. En la medida de que esta este fenómeno se incremente, Vamos a perder eh, un volumen importante de el agua natural del río Rímac. Esto nos va a obligar a buscar otras fuentes de abastecimiento. At the entrance to the La Atahea treatment plant, the pressure on the city's natural water supply is only too clear. Este es el agua que está llegando a la ciudad de Lima desde los Andes para ingresar a la planta de potabilización de La Atahea. Dado el escaso caudal que tiene el río Rímac en este instante, captamos el 100% del agua que llega al río Rímac. La diferencia que dejamos es prácticamente nula. Entonces, desde esta ubicación de la Tarjea hacia el mar, es un río completamente seco. This is particularly worrying for a country dependent on hydroelectric power. It is the source of 80% of Peru's electricity. If the water dries up, the country will face an energy crisis. Currently, 15 cubic meters of water is collected per second here, but the city needs 21. With pressure on resources, distribution is challenging. Todo el área comercial o todo el área de oficinas a determinadas horas demanda un mayor volumen de agua. Entonces, en las viviendas se reduce un poco el consumo. Hay otros eventos también que son importantes. Cuando ocurre un incendio y la compañía de bomberos demanda un mayor volumen de agua, desde aquí podemos controlar ciertas tuberías. Es decir, desde acá podemos controlar en forma inteligente la distribución de agua en la ciudad. 
A quarter of the 8 million people living in Lima are not connected to the mains. Many live in the Asentamientos Humanos, the shanty towns which spring up on the edge of the city. Magali de la Cruz lives in Virgen de Chapi, a poor settlement which is mainly made up of migrants from the south. There's a lot of restriction with the water. You can't play a lot of times. And with respect to the kitchen, without the water, I don't know what to prepare. Because to make a soup, you need the water. Magali has two children, Manuel and Marieli. At the moment, her husband is not working in Lima. I consume a lot of water, despite the fact that I eat a lot. Hay familias que tienen seis, siete miembros y no sé cómo pueden arreglárselas con un tacho o dos tachos de agua a la semana, ¿no? Magali has been living here for ten years. Until eight months ago, she and her neighbors walked down the steep slope to the bottom of the hill 